Welcome to the briefing session of the budget today for the Forsyth County Board of Commissioners. And for those of you watching on Channel 13 and those in this room, it's a privilege to have all of you with us today and it's a privilege to have you watching everything we do because today represents um, the first of many opportunities in the next few days to uh, work with a $500 million budget. It's a lot of money. We want to make sure they all go to the right places. We've had several uh, looks at the budget beforehand, but we have some serious talking to do today, and I'm sure we're going to have a lot of folks who have ideas of their own as to how we're supposed to spend the money, and that's not a bad deal either because it is the taxpayer's money. We have quite a bit of uh, business to take care of before we start, and to get everything underway, uh, here is the Vice Chairman of the Board of Commissioners, Don Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, good afternoon. Um, we're going to begin our meeting today with an invocation from Pastor Mark Key. And come on up, Mark. Uh, he, I, I can call him Mark because he was my pastor for at least 10 years. <laughs> and uh, he's retired and still remaining very active. And we were talking a little bit about retirement life. Um, but he's, he's a wonderful pastor, by the way. And he's been very generous with his time to come down and deliver an invocation on a number of occasions. So, Mark, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the invitation and opportunity, uh, commissioners, and maybe bow our heads. Oh, Lord, would you please gather? stand? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please stand if you're able. I apologize. Okay. Oh, Lord, we gather in this room on this day to take care of the business of our county. Uh, but we also gather knowing that we need you and your guidance in this and every day of our lives. Thank you for our county commissioners and bless them with wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and discernment. Make them and all of us good stewards of the resources you've blessed us with. Lord, in the midst of this world that you have created and called everything that you created good, we see much around us that is not good. We pray for the communities and families that have been hit hard with mass shootings and killings. Comfort the families of the victims and give them and their communities peace and restoration. Guide our government leaders and legislators in finding directions that can help keep us safer. We pray for all government leaders to be guided by your hand, to work together, and to cooperate with each other as we search for directions that will make our world safer and better. Bless our law enforcement officers, our firefighters, our first responders, and our military personnel. We thank you for their selflessness and courage as they put their lives on the line every day. Bless us in this time of economic uncertainty. Bring an end to all wars and fighting and killing, especially in Ukraine. In spite of the darkness of the world around us, there is also much that is good. We thank you for giving all your sons and daughters gifts to be used in bringing your kingdom here on earth. So may your kingdom come and your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. We pray this, all this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance delivered by and led by Commissioner Captain. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor Key. Look forward to seeing you. Um, the agenda today uh, consists solely of the public hearing to receive comments on the Forsyth County 2022-23 budget. Um, this public hearing is an opportunity for commissioners to hear your thoughts on the proposed budgets before we begin our final deliberations, which will take place over the next three days. Um, this hearing is not a debate, but it is an opportunity to hear what you have to say. Your thoughts are important, and we want to hear from each of you who are in attendance, both virtually and in person. Um, there are two options um, for available for citizens who wish to participate. And the first is remotely. And if you are a citizen interested in participating in the public session, you may call 336-422-1200. You will be placed on hold until the public session begins. And I'll repeat that number. 336-422-1200. And if you're attending in person, 
um, please fill out a speaker card. And if you did not get one before you came in or need one, they're right outside the door on the credenza. If you would just fill it out short, very short, and deliver it to uh, um, our clerk, uh, Ashley Sloop, um, we'll, be able to, we'll be able to call you up as soon as we get to you. So, Madam Chair, do we have any callers or speakers? Mr. Vice Chairman, we have one phone call and 11 speaker cards. Uh, why don't we go ahead and have the phone call and then we'll sure. have speakers. Thank you. You are now available. Thank you. Call you up as soon as we get to you. So, good afternoon. Madam Chair, will you please turn the volume Hello. on your device down? <laughs> Yes. Thank you. Thank you for calling the Forsyth County Board of Commissioners public session line. The session is for comments only and questions cannot be answered. Please state your name and address for the record. Lee Covington, Senior Services, 2895 Shore Fair Drive, Winston-Salem. Thank you. Speakers will be limited to three minutes each and a 30 second warning will be given. You may begin. Good afternoon. I'm Lee Covington, President and CEO for Senior Services, a local nonprofit located at 2895 Shore Fair Drive, Winston-Salem. You've likely heard the phrase, there's strength in numbers. Locally, we know that there's also power in joining together as a community to continue the remarkable mission of serving older adults across Forsyth County. The county's directed grant of $375,000 this past year, along with community donations and countless volunteer hours, have helped us to sustain seniors through programs that keep them at home living with dignity and aging with purpose. We've served over 2,100 seniors so far, and we continue to proudly serve Forsyth County seniors through a variety of programs, including home care, CAPDA living at home, meals on wheels, senior lunch, helpline and aging resources, our award-winning Williams Adult Day Center, as well as our recently added Creative Connections and memory connections programs. We couldn't do this great work without the dedication of nearly 1,600 volunteers who have joined forces to support older adults, ensuring them that they're cared for and valued. We're celebrating milestones that demonstrate the impact of our services. Back in November, Winston-Salem State Chancellor Dr. Elwood Robinson and First Lady Denise Robinson, along with Rams cheerleaders and the Red Sea of Sound drumline, delivered our seven million local Meals on Wheels meal. This month, we're kicking off a year of celebration, recognizing the 60th birthday of Meals on Wheels here in Forsyth County. Commissioners, we were thrilled to have most of you present for the ceremonial groundbreaking for our new and innovative intergenerational center for arts and wellness, which will be the new home for our Williams Adult Day Center, as well as dedicated and shared space for 15 local collaborating partner organizations. We're grateful for your approval of a $200,000 grant in last year's budget cycle, as well as your recent final approval of a $500,000 grant through the ARPA funding process. The last two years have been challenging, but senior services staff and volunteers have risen to the challenge. It should be no surprise we continue to be challenged by rapidly increasing costs. And in fact, we have recently experienced a more than 13% increase in our food costs. Representing a year-over-year -year increase in our Meals on Wheels program alone, our expense budget of more than $100,000. Again, we're grateful for your directed support of $375,000 during last year's budget cycle. This year, we've requested a modest increase of $20,000 for a total of $395,000 for the coming year, and we respectfully ask for your thoughtful consideration of this increase. We thank you again for your partnership in serving the older citizens of Forsyth County. Okay, thank you. Um, now we'll hear from the folks that are here in the public and in, in, the, in the room in, in person. And if you would, when you come up, um, please give us your name. You're going to, uh, Matt, the clerk's going to call your name. And please come up and, and just give us your address. And we, I have a little timer and I'll go with three minutes and I'll let you know when it's close to time and hopefully you can wrap up. So, Madam Clerk, um, would you call our first speaker? Yes, sir. Our first speaker is Donna Staley. Please come forward.
Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, Vice Chair, and Board of Commissioners. As Board Chair of the Forsyth County Library Board of Trustees, I'd like to speak on behalf of the library's needs for the coming fiscal year. As our community reopens, the library has laid out a plan to support many new initiatives that will better connect the library to the community and its needs. The library has asked for funding for two physical technicians. The library currently has one such position and these are needed to process the many contracts the library handles in addition to assisting with the many other physical needs and requirements of the department. Increasing the number of physical technicians assigned to the department would greatly increase the department's internal controls and its overall output. The library would like to add four library assistants who are assigned to work where needed. They support library operations in a variety of ways, including helping with checkout of materials, support for programs and reference requests. Many of our locations are leanly staffed, which can present a security risk that these positions would help alleviate. The library would also benefit from having two event planners between Central Library, its nine branches, and Outreach Department. The library hosts between 8,000 and 10,000 programs, classes, and events each year. In addition, there are a number of system-wide initiatives, such as the annual summer reading program, and on the same page, the community read. Event planners would provide a crucial support in marketing, promoting, and overseeing logistics for these initiatives. Thank you, as always, for your support. Thank you. Exactly three minutes. Thank you. I would like to comment that Donna Staley and uh, the lady she came with today, Gail Anderson, are always very good representatives of what we think is a fine library system. Thank you so much. Thank you. Madam Clerk, would you call our second speaker? Gail Anderson, please come forward and state your address for the record. Good afternoon, Commissioners. My address is 2008 Faculty Drive, Winston-Salem, 27106. Thank you for your kind comments about the library and the library board. You know, as I was driving down here this afternoon, I was thinking about from the time I was a really little girl, Thursday afternoons. I know Thursday afternoons to you are briefings or meetings. To me, Thursday afternoon was we got out of school and mom met us and we walked to the library and we got our <laughs> library books. Now, my brother was not much of a reader. He would get one book, the skinniest <laughs> book he could possibly find, and hopefully with a lot of pictures. My mom's rule with me was I had to be able to carry the number of books that we had to walk when we walked back home. So um, lots of times it was a little bit of a challenge, but I, think I, I don't think I ever dropped any of them. So we're here today to ask you for support, as Ms. Daly just said, for those additional positions for the library. And I think you have to really keep in mind that we're spread out over the whole county in 10 different locations. And so the resources that we have have to be very, very um, spread out very, very carefully. But we are, the libraries are so used in our community. The survey that you did of residents recently, 25% um, of our residents said they use the central library. 16% said Clemens, 15% said Louisville, 16% said they use the library website to check out things, et cetera. And I didn't get the figures on the other ones, but our citizens really need and use our libraries. And the positions that we're asking for would do two things. The fiscal positions would help make sure that we purchase the materials properly, collect all the money that we need to collect, and get it allocated properly through the system. The library assistants are really critical. They float from branch to branch depending on where they're needed. And the challenge we have is, as Ms. Staley said, in some of our branches, there's only two people on the staff. And if you can imagine in a, in a library of eight to 10,000 square feet, just having two people, it, it's particularly at busy times, can pre present some problems. And the event planners, it sounds like that might not be a necessity, but what's happening now with the eight to 10,000 events that we 
we have is that that's being done by our librarians and our other staff taking them away from their normal duties so if we had event planners who could manage those events they could be much they could be done much more efficiently and effectively and there could be much more outreach to the community to ensure that everybody knows what's happening so we hope that you will support us and just think about all those little kids that are walking to the library every day and and I hope you'll help to us to continue to provide the services that they need thank you you know I think uh, you probably it's hard have a hard time thinking of me as a little kid but I can tell you the name of the first book I ever read from the public library Library. Okay. And it was about a horse named <laughs> Calico. Calico? <laughs> yeah. Well, I wonder if that book, you know, we got a lot of old books in our library. There may still Probably be there, those yeah. books there. <laughs> Thank you all. Vice Chairman, if I may. Um, one of the things that I would like, um, because I know that there's a theme um, regarding recruitment uh, throughout the county, how many vacancies does the library have? Now, I am a friend of the library, so don't take what I'm asking. It's just I just need to know um, how many vacancies that there is with the county already with the libraries um, regarding these two um, positions. So thank you. The next speaker is Kyle Scott. Please come forward. State your address for the record, please. Uh, yeah, my name's Kyle Scott, uh, 4401 High Point Road, Kernersville, North Carolina. Good afternoon. How y'all doing? Um, I'm here to plead our case for a two-cent tax increase for our fire department, Union Cross Fire and Rescue. Um, we uh, are in dire need of a new fire apparatus. We have a 1996 model is the newest fire apparatus that we have at this point. Um, we need to replace it. Um, and a rising cost of everything else, including diesel fuel, paid staff. We're one of the lowest paid departments in the county. Um, that's pretty much all I got. It's kind of straight and to the point. <laughs> if y'all have anything for me, I'll be glad to answer it. We appreciate you being here. Thank and, you very and, much and for your time. In fact, I, I, I've read your, um, your proposal issues and looked at it, so we appreciate you sharing. Yes, sir. Thank you all Thank for you. your time. David Kivett, please come forward and state your address for the record. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is David Kivett. I'm the treasurer for the Louisville Fire Department located at 216 Louisville Clemens Road in Louisville. I just wanted to briefly uh, discuss our requested increase for the Louisville Fire Department. Um, like we've mentioned before, 100% of that proposed increase is to bring our young men and women firefighters closer to their peers doing the same work. They get on a fire truck with water and ground in the community every day. They deserve to be paid accordingly. As you can see in the information that we previously provided to you in a 2020 pay study, our firefighters were 22% below average. And even further behind, if you look at the 2022 pay study, which we also provided for you. With the proposed mid-year increases that many budgets have in them, our firefighters will continue to fall behind in matching. While the examples we provided to you were predominantly municipal departments, it should be noted that that's where our firefighters are leaving and going to. They're going to those municipal departments. While we're not a municipal department and that is totally out of our control, we do feel that we should be closer to paying our staff closer to the rates that these people are getting paid. We will never be able to match the benefits of a municipal department, but we should at least come close to matching the pay. During the discussion about our pay study, one of our civilian board members made the comment, this is an embarrassment for what we're paying our employees. There is no reason they should be paid less to do the same job. This is a civilian board member who has no previous fire experience but he does have an extensive background in business. The Louisville Fire District has one of the lowest ratings in the county and state for fire district in terms of our insurance rating. In many cases, we, we lowered the fire insurance that our citizens were paying. They were paying much less than they are compared to other departments. 
This was accomplished by the hard work of our underpaid staff. If we're only funded to one half cent level instead of the full cent as we're requesting, we'll still be behind the 2020 pay study as we move closer to 2023. I encourage our county commissioners to listen to the proposal presented by the civilian-led board of the Louisville Fire Department and support the full one cent increase so that the men and women firefighters can come closer to market value for the job that they're performing. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Clifford Lewis, please come forward and state your address for the record. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Clifford Lewis. I live at 150 Deer Run Drive in Louisville, and I am a citizen representative on the board of directors for the Louisville Fire Department. And I'm here to speak in favor of a full one cent tax increase for our fire district. That tax increase will impact me directly, but in a very beneficial way. When I first moved to Louisville, <clears throat> my house was located and the Louisville Fire District was a split 5-9 district, and I lived in the 9 part of the district for as far as insurance ratings. Now, without having moved my house, I live in a district that is a straight Class 2 for insurance rating purposes. My homeowner's insurance is significantly less now because of that insurance rating, and my savings is considerably greater than the $315 in fire district tax that I currently pay. So while we're here this afternoon to talk about tax increases, it's not just about the, the rate. It's about the money that we as, as residents in our community, you know, pay for our homeowners coverage. Now Louisville has been blessed with great facilities, great staff, great equipment, as a matter of fact, we've been the beneficiary of a brand new fire truck through a state grant program. But that fire depart, that fire truck cannot leave the station without staff. And increasingly, we're having a difficult time maintaining staff because of our pay differential. We get new recruits with no training. We spend thousands of dollars to train these and only to have them leave for Winston-Salem, Clemens, Kernersville, and even Forsyth County's 09 <clears throat> because of greater pay and greater benefits. So <clears throat> Louisville is basically serving as a training center for many of the departments within the, within the county. So I, I would ask that you consider the fact that we need to be able to pay our employees, you know, a full competitive rate as we will, as David said, we will not be able to match the benefits because we are one of the few departments that is not not covered by it, um, the 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 well, one one of the few departments locally, Vienna and Clemens on either side of us are both participate in the um, state employment uh, retirement program, state employees retirement program, as do all county you know, personnel, but we don't have that advantage. And so the only way we can make it up is through pay. So I, I would ask that you consider that at, and, and grant to us the, the tax increase so that our employees can be fairly compensated and that we as citizens can expect to have somebody show up when we dial 911. I'll be glad to answer any questions if you have any. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Darren Needham, please come forward and state your address for the record. Good afternoon, Darren Needham. I'm the fire chief for Louisville Fire Department 216, Louisville Clemens Road, Louisville, North Carolina. Uh, there are currently 16 volunteer fire departments serving 25 districts in Forsyth County. Uh, five departments who serve eight districts currently at an eight and a half cent tax rate or lower, 11 departments serving 17 districts at a rate of 0.092 or higher. That's 70% of the volunteer fire districts. If Louisville, Louisville is approved for the nine cent 
rate, there will remain four departments serving at 0.85 or, or lower, 25%. There will be 12 departments serving 19 districts at nine cents or higher, 76% of the volunteer fire departments in Forsyth County. If Louisville's provided the nine cent rate, our citizens will continue to pay less tax on comparable properties than 70% of the population served by Forsyth County. The county manager's office has stated that Louisville fires compared itself to municipal departments, specifically Kernersville, Winston-Salem, and Forsyth County. And while this is true, we're doing so because these are the departments that we are losing our staff to after we've borne the cost, the time, and the expense to train them. We're also comparing ourselves against Clemens Fire Department, a June 2020 pay study produced by our HR consultants, and a February 2022 job posting from across the state of North Carolina. If, a, if provided the nine cent tax rate, Louisville starting pay will match Clemens Fire Department, uh, but starting pay remains 10 to 13 percent behind these municipal departments uh, and the current state average in our comparison. You note that Louisville Fire is focused on providing competitive pay for employees, regardless of their municipal status. When a citizen calls 911, they are not concerned with that employee's municipal status, only that the responders are qualified and capable of handling the emergency at hand. And this is the root of Louisville's problem. You know, we consistently lose an average of two trained career firefighters per year that must be replaced by inexperienced and underqualified individuals. In Thursday's budget presentation, County Manager Zalvis noted that there were many reasons, uh, many issues um, that affect retention within county staff. Doubled staff workload and burnout being chief among them, along with the national labor shortage. Louisville spends over $49,000 a year training two new hires to minimum standards. It includes almost 600 hours of repetitive training for existing staff and an additional 600 hours of forced overtime to maintain staffing while those new hires are off-site being trained. Income was noted as the leading cause of county employee departure. Louisville starting pay is currently 25% less than the Forsyth County market, in part due to mid-year wage increases implemented by these departments to remain competitive. With the full penny rate increase, Louisville remains 10% behind the firefighter market. Louisville Fire Department does not hold the key to determine our municipal or volunteer status. Our discussion today is about comparable pay for comparable work. 100% of the requested increase is intended for pay scale adjustments and position reclassifications, intended to break the cycle of hiring inexperienced staff only to see them leave for other departments within Forsyth County once we've invested the time, attention, and dollars required to fully qualify them. Thank you. You're welcome to address any questions you may have. Thank you. Elizabeth Dampier, please come forward and state your address for the record. Good afternoon, Elizabeth Dampier, Executive Director at Collidium, located at 400 West Haynes Mill Road, Winston-Salem, 27105. Chairman Plyler, Vice Chair Martin, fellow commissioners, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I just want to let you know and reiterate how critical your support of Collidium is to our success and to our ability to keep the museum affordable and accessible to our entire community. Although we are recovering, it is slow. We're only going to see about 50% of the numbers through our doors that we did pre-COVID. But interestingly, we have some numbers that are growing much faster. That's our Museums for All program, which I've shared with you, are for folks who have an EBT card and they can come in at a reduced admission every day, any day, as well as those that can check out our community access passes if you have a library card in all of our libraries. Those numbers are coming back at about 80%. I think it's important here to note that our entire community values what is offered at Collidium, the program opportunities, and the exhibits and educational experiences that we have. 
Also through our new initiative, PRISM, which is designed to build skill sets in innovation and engineering, we're seeing great success with our program like Invention Convention. We worked with 250 elementary students this year who identified a problem and then developed a product to, to address that with a solution. They also create a business plan and then did a presentation on it. We sent five young people to the Henry Ford in Dearborn, Michigan for the National Invention Convention Finals. They just returned last week. And I want to leave you with a quote from one of the teachers. Her student from Ward Elementary was one of the five that we sent. And she said, my heart is full and smiling. Today, a few of my students participated in the first annual Invention Convention at Collidium North. My black male student got to meet and talk to not one black male engineer, but three with over 50 patents between them. I saw the sparkle in his eyes and the wonder of seeing someone who looked like him. It was like he was looking at his future self. Today was a good day. They made a difference, a moment, an experience he nor his mother will ever forget. Y'all, I cried because I was so full. This is why I teach, and this is why I say yes to many opportunities presented that directly benefit my students. With your support, Collidium provides this, and we'll be providing it to over 1,500 students next year. Thank you for your support. Good report. You made my day. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Owens, please come forward and state your address for the record. Thank you, Ashley. Mark Owens, 411 West 4th Street. Chairman, Vice Chairman, Commissioners, County Manager, great to see you in person. This is fantastic. We'd we'll like to speak to you today about the request from Greater Winston-Salem Inc. for continued support and an additional support above and beyond our normal agreement for economic development services. On behalf of our board of directors and over 1,000 business members of our organization and the businesses of Forsyth County, we're committed on helping to do three major things by 2030. Be the best place to raise a family, be a more equitable community, and be the top mid-sized city and community in the Southeast for economic growth. And we do that through job creation, as well as capital investment. Just past year, 505 new jobs announced over $297 million of capital investment. And we're here today to ask for additional funding and continue funding because of some of the increase in the program of work that we're working on in conjunction with your departments here at the county, as well as the overall interest in Forsyth County for location services. When we started as Greater Winston-Salem Inc., uh, through many conversations with you as our commissioners in 2019, when we started in early 2020, there were 12 active projects. 12 economic development projects. As of this morning, we had 76 active economic development projects. In 2020, we hosted, while it was COVID, even virtually 12 total site visits in person. To date, we've done over 25. We're on pace for over 50 for the year, and we've had one a week for the past seven weeks in a row. These are major companies that are looking at locating with hundreds and thousands of jobs in Forsyth County. There are three main areas that we'd like to increase on, which is part of the reason for increased funding, which is develop and implement marketing strategies of specifically county-owned and um, economic development assets. Smith Reynolds Airport, we've done the, the aviation study. How do we market that now? Create programming flyers and market that for the economic development sites. Tanglewood Business Park, as many of you know, with many announcements in the community and the region, developers and, and obviously suppliers are looking at our area and Tanglewood Business Park needs that push forward, which has continued to growth there. And the entrepreneurial efforts. There's been many entrepreneurial changes in our ecosystem and our organization has been asked to really take the lead. We've taken that and pushed forward on our startup support. Since 2021, January, over $57 million have been invested in our startups here in the community. As I mentioned, we are on pace for record uh, amount of projects, amount of visits, and those cost a lot of dollars and add challenges. But it also provides a return, as that investment in just last year produced over one point, almost $1.1 million per year to the county budget over the next five years, or over $5.5 million for five years as a return on that investment. 
So we're not asking today for just a grant, we're asking for investment in the job growth and the future job growth for citizens across our entire community and across our county. As you know, Greater Winston-Salem Inc. is always ready to step up and do extra things, maybe grants or minority business enterprise grants or anything that we need to do to make Forsyth County the best place to live and to have those career options. And we're ready to do that going forward. And we appreciate your support. Don't leave. I have a question. Yes, as soon sir. as you stood up, I thought about something. I had a telephone call from an agent that is a talent agent in Nashville, Tennessee. And he's from this area and he's, he lived here. He was educated here years ago. But his job is to get jobs for people who like to play or sing in clubs and that type of thing. And he says, do you know of anything? And I said, I absolutely have no clue. And then you stepped up. <laughs> and I'm thinking you might, at least in your business, have some idea of uh, whom I might put him in contact with to bring some of the triad talent, country music, symphony music, whatever, who are trying to make it in the world of show business. I don't know where to go to what, what to do, but this is, seems to me to be a golden opportunity to, to ask the question. That's all I had to say. But well, Mr. I Chairman, I, I can assure you that person is not me that would be singing or performing, <laughs> but I know that uh, Ms. Chase Law is here from the Arts Council as well. That could be a great person to ask. But with our community, the School of the Arts and the our arts community, I'm sure we have many talented people here you that know, we the can only help out. The only person I can think of is a guy who lives in Greensboro. I've known him for years. His name is Billy Crash Craddock. And he made a big hit song that didn't make it here, but he recorded it in Nashville. It became a million seller in Australia, of all places. And the name of the song was Boom Boom Baby. A, we'll <laughs> we have may, to, we we'll, may have another one here somewhere. but uh. we'll, we'll have to look that up. And Mr. Chairman, just before I close, I did want to recognize Calvin McRae, our VP of Public Policy, and Ellis Keep, our Director of Economic Recruitment, who's with us today. Our team is committed going forward, and we'll help you with some of that talent. But I may defer... Uh, to Miss Law, if she's able to help answer that question a little better. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Iris Sunshine, please come forward and state your address for the record. You ever heard that song, Boom Boom Baby? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have not. Uh, 102 West 3rd Street, Winston-Salem 27101. Thank you, Chairman Plyler and Commissioners, for the opportunity to speak with you today. My name is Iris Sunshine, and I am the Executive Director of the Children's Law Center of Central North Carolina. On behalf of the Children's Law Center's board and staff, I thank you for your gener generous support and the $50,000 included in the fiscal year 2022-2022 budget for CLC's work, mission, and commitment to the children of Forsyth County. Today, the Children's Law Center is requesting additional funding due to an unanticipated loss of revenue. With me today is CLC's board chair, Dr. Kathy Paling. We only recently learned that the Governor's Crime Commission did not approve funding for four of our staff attorney positions. This came as quite a surprise to us. We applied under the underserved crime victims category, which is the most competitive for VOCA or Victims of Crime Act grantees. This year, the Governor's Crime Commission received a record 81 applications in this category, with requests totaling $31,390,172 and awarded only $7,640,845. We come before you today requesting additional funding for the salaries and taxes of two of our Forsyth County-based attorneys in the amount of $107,872. For a total request of $157,872, be assured that the board and I are strategically pursuing multiple avenues for sustaining these positions and the Children's Law Center's programming beyond fiscal year 22-23. We have been researching new foundations for additional funding sources. Our signature fundraising event, Speak Up for Children, is scheduled for October 6th. We also plan to reapply to the Governor's Crime Commission for the next fiscal year. Our team needs to continue their critical work and focus on mitigating the potentially negative long-term 
health and behavioral consequences of adverse childhood experiences on the children we serve. Now, more than ever, the investment in Forsyth County's children who are experiencing trauma and violence is vital to their health and well-being and the current and future health of our community. Thank you. Kathy Poling, please come forward and state your address for the record. Good afternoon. My name is Kathy Poling, 2137 Warwick, Winston-Salem. All right. Um, Chairman Plyer, um, Vice Chairman Martin, and all commissioners, thank you for this opportunity to speak. My name is Kathy Poling. I'm a pediatrician who is passionate about improving the lives of all children. And it's for that reason I serve as the board chair of the Children's Law Center. It's notable that the Children's Law Center is the only organization for Scythe County that, that serves as guardian ad litem for children in high custody um, domestic disputes and children experiencing domestic violence, abuse, and neglect. As uh, we all know, the mental health of children before the pandemic was a concern, and that concern has only increased. Adverse childhood experiences in children are common throughout Forsyth County. And addressing them, and particularly addressing the high custody dis um, disputes and children experiencing domestic violence, um, abuse and neglect is really important for improving the outcomes of all of these children. And so um, while resources are scarce, the needs for children needing services from the Children's Law Center are great and are in going to probably increase significantly with the economic uncertainty that we have before us. We thank you tremendously for your support and appreciate your consideration for this additional needs so the Children's Law, Serve, so the Children's Law Center can serve all children in need and support them. Thank you. Mr. Vice Chairman, our last speaker is Chase Law. Please come forward and state your address for the record. Good afternoon. I'm Chase Law, President and CEO of Arts Council of Winston-Salem and Forsyth County, 251 North, North Spruce Street, Winston-Salem. I'm going to start off with gratitude. I want to thank everyone sitting at these chairs today, the Board of Commissioners, the staff of Forsyth County, for your generous support, both in the ARPA allocations to us and annually. You have been steadfast supporters, and we cannot do what we do without that support. I also want to thank the staff for their hard work on their campaign for the Arts Council. And we culminated the campaign with a talent show and where I sang with uh, Dudley Watts last week. So that was a lot of fun. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Excellent. With Dudley's invitation. But thank you so much for that. And thank everyone in this room. Every single person in this room wants to make our community, our county, a better place to live, work, and play. So thank you for that hard work. Arts Council is no different. We are working so hard to re-energize this community and the special appropriations you gave us from the ARPA funds, that's once in a lifetime funding that's gonna help with re-energizing and plant seeds for the future. But our annual appropriations from your annual budget, they help us do everything we plan to do every year. They help us with our operations. They help us with our grant making. They help us with our summer parks, which we kicked off yesterday at Tanglewood. And the next one's June 19th at Tanglewood Park, so please come. Um, but it really helps us. We cannot do what we do without our annual operation budget. We have to have that. It is separate and apart from the ARPA allocation. So I'm so grateful for your remembering us this year again. Uh, last year, you increased our support to 170,000. This year, we're in the budget for 100. I would ask for you to reconsider and bring us back up to flat to the 170 to help us continue working through our budget, making more grants, continuing to plant seeds. It's all about growth and bringing the Forsyth County community together as one. The things we're doing with the arts, it can help you achieve your goals, it can help Mr. Owens achieve his goals, and so many others. We're all in this together, as they say in High School Musical, and I appreciate all you do for us and our community. 
Thank you. And let Thank me know you. who that person is. I'll be glad to help them. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, if I may take a point, point of privilege here. I had no idea that Chase was such a vocalist till I heard her sing with the Deadly uh, Trio <clears throat> the other evening at Bailey Park. She has a fantastic voice for those that don't know. And I'm going to be her agent in the near future. <laughs> That's good. Well, thank all of you for coming. Um, I appreciate your passion. And I think Chase made the comment just as a closing. I'm thanking everybody for being here to, for all that you do. Because every, every comment today was about making our county better. Um, whether it's more competitive, uh, provide better services, um, enrich the lives of people in this community from children to adults. So thank you very much for being here. And uh, we have a, we have a, actually a pretty big task as we do every year. This one's a bigger one in some ways, um, but we certainly appreciate you providing that input and giving us more in person and, and on the phone um, sort of guidance. So thank you very much. And I believe we begin our deliberations in the morning at uh, 9 a.m. here. Um, so I, until that time, I guess I can look for a, perhaps a motion to adjourn this hearing. So move, Mr. Vice Chair. Uh, second. Got a motion and a second. I believe by the chairman. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 We are adjourned until tomorrow morning. Thank you.